Our reading is from 1 Samuel, the third chapter, the first ten verses. It's a selection out of the larger part of the story, chapter 10, that we read together this week as a congregation. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The le- then the Lord called Samuel and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, Uh, I didn't call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel! And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he rose and went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord. For your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is number 762. Well done. You may be seated. And now Simon says, pat your head. Hey, look at how many of you did it. Wonderful. You know, there's something to listening or hearing that we make a differentiation. That we understand them to mean two different things. And yet the same thing. If um, I said, "Pat," Simon says, pat your head, and some of you did, and some of you didn't, there's a good chance that most all of us heard that, but only some of us did it. Now, you may not have done it because you recognize I'm not Simon, I'm Kevin, or you might not have done it because you thought it was just kind of a rhetorical funny thing that I was saying in response to our struggle through that hymn. Or you may not have done it because you thought, well, I'll wait to see if others do it, and those near you weren't yet doing it. But, or you might just have wanted to have been defiant altogether. That's fine with me. But we understand that when we say listen or hear, that there can be this differentiation between taking it in, hearing it, listening to it, and actually following through on what we listened to, what we heard. You follow? So we'll say someone didn't listen, and yet they heard us fine. But when we say they didn't listen, they didn't do what we were saying to do. Correct? We got got clarity on what we're talking about here? Okay, so listening and hearing is a big part of what we're going to talk about this morning, that God's Word is talking to us about this morning. This morning we are in chapter 10 of the story. You know, many of you here, we've been talking about this for a while. We're reading through the story. It is an abridged version. 
put it in a chronological order of our scriptures. Now, it doesn't contain all of the Holy Bible, but a large portion. And we're reading it together as a family of faith, enjoying the conversations that we're having in the hallways and in our gatherings, and just with one another about what we read in the last week. And in this week, it was chapter 10 of this 31-chapter book, chapter 10, dealing with this period of 1 Samuel, the first 15 chapters or so of 1 Samuel. Now, we find ourselves historically, in the chronological order, in between the conquest of Israel, or that is, they're coming into the promised land, and that age of kings. Actually, we start to kind of hang out with kings here in this place. But this period that's in between is often known as the period of the judges. Judges, we hear as judge, someone who sits in a courtroom and rules over things. But judges here is usually meant as some kind of leader that is raised up by God in a time that the people need a leader. And there are a series of judges. And we enter into this story dealing with at least four central characters who are all striving to either be listened to or have or or be or that they need to listen to God. Our characters are Hannah, Eli the priest, Samuel the young boy who later becomes a judge and prophet, and Saul the first king of Israel. Those are our four characters outside of the other characters, that is the people of God and God, God's self. And in those interactions, we have a number of struggles as far as listening. You have Hannah wanting God to listen to her so that she may have a child. You have Eli, who on one hand listens to God, but on another hand doesn't listen to God because he's not addressing his two sons, who are also functioning as priests, and are running around doing all sorts of things they shouldn't. Matter of fact, when he goes to correct them, his two boys, no surprise, don't listen to him. And then you have Samuel and the passage that we just read, in which he's learning how to listen to the Lord. And then you have both God and Samuel trying to get the king Saul, who comes on the scene towards the end of our reading, to get him to listen, and Saul, King Saul, does not listen. So, this passage, your servant is listening, is central to our work this morning. It's the application that we get to walk out of here with. Yes, I just ended with a preposition. It's the application. Your servant is listening. That should be on the heart of each of us as we work through our day today. That's the hope. That's the delivery. That's what's being offered into our hands among the many items of Scripture this morning. Your servant is listening. And I want to give you four handlebars or four points to take hold of As we work through, your servant is listening. Recognition. First point. Relationship. Second point. Role. Third point. Response. Fourth point. For those of you who are taking notes, recognition relationship, role, response. Four R's. We'll start with recognition. Recognition. When you see someone and you know who they are, you recognize them. They somehow find their way into that category they've already been placed within. Within your brain, there's a recognition of who they are. Now, think about the boy Samuel. Samuel has been given 
back to the Lord. Hannah, his mother, wanted a child, and God gifted her with a child, and that child was Samuel, and Samuel was gifted back to God. So he's growing up in the temple. He's growing up, that is, in the, the holy place of God under the instruction of Eli the priest. And it says that in this passage that we just read, that the lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out. The understanding for us, if we, if we had a grasp of what that meant, would be that it's, night is almost over. The evening is almost done, or excuse me, yeah, evening is almost done, morning's almost here. The lamp hasn't yet gone out. And you know what it's like when you're sleeping hard and you've been wrestling through the night to sleep and get every last ounce and someone or something wakes you up early. That happened to you? My children still do that to me. <laughs> now, I like to be a loving father and be very kind, but when a child calls me 30 minutes before my alarm goes off, and the reason they've called me is because they want me to recover them when they could have pulled those covers up themselves... When that time is grabbed from you, it's hard to have the right response. So we can understand Eli <coughs> when Samuel comes to him and says, you called me. Why does Samuel go to Eli when he hears his name called? He goes there because of the recognition that the only one who would call him at this time and in this hour is Eli. At least that's what he thinks. You see, we put everything into categories of understanding. We don't have people out of the blue calling us. I don't expect a half hour before I'm supposed to get up, someone in my house that I don't know calling me. Nor do you. It says that the boy Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Now he's been worshiping the Lord right along. He's been helping with all the duties of the tabernacle. He's been right there in the thick of it, and yet it says that he did not yet know the Lord. This can be true for us in the church. Irony of irony, that we can go through all the religious roles of Christianity, all the religious roles of whatever we're involved in, and still not know. The very first point of speak, Lord, your servant is listening is this recognition when God says Samuel, recognizing it's God. And interestingly enough, we have Eli, this one who has struggled to listen to God, being the very one who coaches Samuel to listen, to recognize who's calling him. It takes Eli himself a few groggy moments to wake up into it, but to recognize that it might well be the Lord that's calling Samuel. And he coaches Samuel what to say. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Your servant is listening. You know, when I coach baseball, I'm always instructing the young boys how to play the game. They've seen it. They know to catch the ball. They know to throw the ball. They know to hit the ball. But I'm working on those finer points of recognizing how to do that, just what to do. Those of us have gathered here this morning because we've come to know the Lord. And now, because of that, we are all designated coaches. Now, you might be looking around and saying, I don't know if I'm ready for coaching. Or you might be looking at the person next to you and saying, and I know that person is not ready for coaching. But we are all coaches to some degree. To coach others into recognizing the Lord. To really come to understand when God is pushing into someone's life, pressing in, trying to get their attention, it is our role to point out, you know, that might be God speaking. Have you thought about that? And if you have or haven't, and since other things haven't worked for you yet, have you considered just praying? Okay, God, what do you want? 
The first point is recognition. Helping others and reminding ourselves to recognize that God is calling. The second point was relationship. Think about what we're saying, what we're being asked to go out with today. Your servant is listening. Say it with me. Your servant is listening. One more time, just so you can feel it. Your servant is listening. My hope is that that just kind of bounces around in your head. Your servant is listening. What does that mean? Your servant is listening. That second point is relationship. Your. Your. Your is a case of belonging. It's yours. In this case, we are yours. Eli's instruction to Samuel begins with an understanding that Samuel doesn't just belong to the tabernacle temple reality. Samuel doesn't just belong to Eli as his personal servant. No, Samuel belongs to the Lord. We belong to God. Your, your servant is listening. I'm yours. I love watching all sorts of kid movies, and I really, quite frankly, don't have a lot of choice. (laughs) But one of my favorite is Toy Story. All of us who were able to see Toy Story when it first came out were amazed at the animation, amazed at the graphics, and that our childhood toys were suddenly on the screen doing all sorts of wild things. I remember the, the army men suddenly being... They're, they're, they're the reconnaissance team to, to know when the humans are coming so that the toys can all just kind of go back to their normal status. But there were so many profound things within that movie, and one of the most profound things was on the bottom of the main character's shoe, Woody, this cowboy with a string on his back, on the bottom of his shoe was the word Andy. He belonged to Andy which was the human boy who played with all his toys. He was Andy's. God has written his name on your heart. You are his. If you are in Christ, you are his. When we baptize you, and when we're baptized, we are baptized as Christ, and the sign of the cross is put on our forehead, reminding us that we are his. Now, what does that mean in relationship? That means, and we expect, something more to happen. You know, you could come to our home and uh, see our dog, Mia, and say to Mia, sit, or come. Mia, come. Mia, sit. Mia, go over there. And chances are, Mia will look at you like, (laughs) and, and do nothing. She won't listen to you. She just wants to sniff you. (laughs) But if I say, Mia, go. Mia, sit. What's she going to do? She's going to go. She's going to sit. Why? Because we're in relationship. She knows who I am, and she knows the relationship. Now, my kids are going to go home and point out, no, Mia doesn't do that for any of us. (laughs) But that's beside the point. When we're in relationship, chances are things are going to happen. What do we say? It's not what you know, it's who you know. Your servant is listening. There's the recognition There's the relationship, and then there's the role. Role. Our role. It's your servant. We are God's servant. Doulos is what the word is in Greek. Not that this is in Greek in this point, but what I like about that, just to bring it up to you, is doulos means both servant and slave. And we don't like that slave part. But those two are mixed together. 
This understanding that we are His, and we are His for His purposes. Your servant. We are God's tool. God's instrument for God's purposes. You know, the other day I was downstairs with the prime timers, uh, that group that gathers on Thursday mornings to um, encourage uh, the groundskeepers as well as to build relationships and to grow deeper before our Lord. And, and they kindly invite me down once a month to, to share with them God's word. And we were talking this week about the reality that we exist to glorify God. Our very existence, our very purpose, is to bring glory to God. That's why we're here. For those of you who've been trying to figure that out for a long time, there's the answer. You're here to glorify God. We are here to glorify God. We are God's servant for God's purposes. Your servant is listening. So when he says go, we need to go. And when he says sit, we need to sit. We are God's servant for his purposes. And God does have instructions for us. It's not, well, I wish he'd speak to me like he spoke to Samuel. Boy, it would be nice if I could just hear for once God speak into my bedroom right around the time I was sleeping to tell me what I'm to do. Life would be so much better if I knew what I was supposed to do. Now, I'll grant you, there are a lot of moments in life where we're trying to discern what God wants us to do. But the bigger picture, God's been pretty clear about. God has called us. He's made us his own. Not so that we can just be happy, but that we can also go out and bring others in to be his own. We have a responsibility One of our first and primal responsibilities is simply to love, to really love, and not to choose who we will love, and not to love because this is the easy way to love, but to love even in the hardest of circumstances, to love those who don't love us, which is precisely what he did with us, loved us when we didn't love him. We are his servants. We are his instruments. We can often ask ourselves, why doesn't God just snap his fingers and make it all better? Because he has chosen instead to work through us, his servants. The imperfect creatures that we are, the imperfect church that we are, he has chosen to work through us. And in our weakness, to show his strength and be glorified. We need to recognize, we need to see the relationship we're in, and take part in the role that we've been given. Which brings us to that last part, the response. Your servant is listening, listening. Are we listening? Are we not only taking it in, But are we willing to respond and do what we've just heard? Are we listening? If you look at all that's been taking place in the full breadth of the story, not just chapter 10, but from the very beginning, the question is, are we listening? Adam and Eve, you can eat of any tree of the garden. You just may not eat of this tree. And what do they do? Eat of that tree. Moses. At the burning bush, are you listening? Don't send me, God. Send somebody else. Send my brother Aaron. Are you listening? Pharaoh, are you listening? Are you listening? People of God in the wilderness, are you listening? Joshua, I want you to take the people across that Jordan River. Don't worry. When you go to step into it, it'll part. And when you get there on the other side, I then want you to go over to that city, Jericho, and I want you to conquer that city. But how you're going to do it is you're going to walk around it one time for seven days, and then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around it seven times. And then just yell and the walls will come down. Are you listening? (laughs) 
response. Are we listening? The end of chapter 10, the story, was with the beginning of recognizing that Saul is made king of Israel. The people of God have not listened to God, and they've called for their own king. And God has finally listened to them and given them what they want. And Saul has been called upon to listen to God. (coughs) And one of his first major tasks is to conquer the Amalekites and not allow anyone to survive. Now, I'm not here to discuss with you the good, the bad, and the indifferent of that directive, but that was the directive. When Samuel comes to check in on Saul and how that went, he comes to Saul and says, why are there still Amalekites around? What is, what's going on? And Saul says, I listened, I heard, I did what God commanded. And Samuel's response is, what's all that? Bah, the sheep that I hear then. What's that about? Oh, we saved those to give an offering to God. And Samuel says, stop. And here, folks, this is where I want us to hear. We often will listen to God, but listen with our understanding so that we can still do what we want to do. We listen in part. We do not listen in whole. And we want to still preserve our agenda, what we want. We do not fully invest. We partially invest, which is what Saul did. And Samuel finally says, enough! Don't give me any more excuses. And Saul wants to press the point. No, I really, I followed every direction. I just kept these so that we could, what? Glorify God. But Samuel sees through it. And we can see through it as well. And the punishment of that is that the kingship will be removed from Saul, and he's told such. To which, at that point, Saul finally confesses and said, the truth is, I listened to the people. They wanted to keep some of the sheep. When we're listening to God, we're often tempted to listen to the people around us because we're afraid of losing those relationships around us. God is calling on to us to listen. And it is one of the hardest things for us to do because we still want to preserve all that we presently are. But God is busy trying to reshape us into his servants to fulfill his role so that he might be glorified. Not that we be glorified, but that he be glorified. And so with that, we are being called to listen. Jesus Christ said to his disciples, just before he's about to leave them, when it's going to be done and he's going to be taken to the cross, he gives them a new commandment. And his new commandment is that we love one another. Just as he's loved us, we are to love one another. And what he means by that is, he came to love us even when we didn't love him. And he's going to love us through, even to that final point of rejection, he's going to love us all the way to the point of death. And he turns to his disciples, to you and I, is it you and me? Grammarians can help me later. And says, you love the same way. Love all the way to it, because you are my servant. And it's so God can be glorified. Because you don't know that if you love that person that much, their heart may yet change. And they may call on the Lord. We don't know how it's all going to work, but he is calling on us to love unconditionally. And it is one of the hardest things for us to do. He's calling on us to listen. And if we don't understand what he's saying, we have this final passage from Matthew chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. 
I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did you, we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison you didn't look after me. They also answer, Lord, when did we not see you? When did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Being called to listen. It's not for us to weigh out whether it's good, bad, or how it's going to play out for us. We're being called to listen, to love one another just as he's loved us. And this morning, my greatest hope for each one of us as we go forth is that those words would be echoing in our head over and over that we might be asking ourselves, what does it look like for us today in this hour, in this day, throughout this week? Speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. Let us pray.